What is up, everyone? It is Diecast Buffet here again, guys. One of the most controversial moments in NASCAR history just happened at Martinsville. A moment that will probably be talked about for years to come. Let's break it down. So, Ryan Blaney wins the race. That's, you know, he, he won it last year. Fantastic job. Uh, tip of the cap to the Ryan Blaney Cats as you're going to the finale uh, you made up for your very bad move at the end of Homestead. You're going to race for a second championship in a row. But the main controversial about this, and I I'm going to try to talk about it and break it down what I truly think about it in a short video because I, I want to go back and watch football. Yeah, B blame. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, that's what happens when you run a NASCAR race with eight other football games. Oh, by the way, there's four other ones that follow that. So, yeah, that's besides the point. I'm going to try to do this with no editing. So, if there's any issues... Forgive me. This moment right here in NASCAR history is going to be talked about for years and years and years to come, just like 2013 at Richmond. Chris Rebell was the, the final driver to advance to the Final Four, but he rode the wall on exit and had maybe, I, I can't confirm it, but maybe some help from another Toyota team, that being the 23 car, uh, Bubba Wallace. I, I don't know all the details. I'm just saying it's kind of interesting. You have a flat tire last lap of the race. Maybe he really did. Maybe he ran over a piece of metal. I have no idea. Okay. And the controversial part for the 24 car is apparently there was communication of the three and the one that being Austin Dillon and Ross Chastain. Explain to me how a car that is really slow at Martinsville. Okay. They're holding you up. And you're behind them for like 15, maybe 20 laps. I mean, Byron was very slow. And he could not afford to lose not one spot. And the three and the one stay right behind him for like 15 laps straight. And apparently there was communication that they had, I don't know, maybe a, a deal, a, a handshake agreement. I don't know what it all was. But from what I heard in the broadcast, that was kind of interesting. Maybe I'm misinterpreting some of it. They stayed behind Byron for lap after lap after lap. Essentially what maybe the 23 car did, but for the Chevrolet camp. So you have Bell possibly having a little assistance. Hey, I need one point. Can someone, you know, magically pull a 2013 Clint Boyer? Wink, wink. And Byron's, hey, I can't afford to give up one point. Can someone pull a 2013 Clint Boyer? Wink, wink. I'm just saying... In my honest thoughts, and maybe I maybe I don't know the rule book as much as I wish I did in terms of the current day NASCAR competition, I don't think any of them should have made it. In my honest opinion, maybe there's more data. I don't think Bell or Byron should have made it, and it should have been the next two, which I think was Hamlin and Larson. I know, that's we're, we're really going off the deep end. But based on the rules that I've seen, you know, what do they call it? Uh, manipulating the outcome of a race. That is something that usually could get you DQ'd um, or DQ'd. They've had it many times throughout the years and they don't call it. I think it has to be very egregious. I think this was probably... <laughs> it was so obvious. Like, I think even a casual fan that might watch five races a year could see how obvious it was. In my honest opinion with the 24 car. Maybe I'm just misinterpreting. Maybe the, the one and the three just sucked and they couldn't get around the 24. But it, it just... Seeing like six cars stuck behind one car for like 15 laps at Martinsville because they were like stacked up. You had Brad Kozlowski and some other guys, I think. It looked like they were getting ready to do a restart. Like it was, it was crazy them being double wide. And then Christopher Bell magically has a Toyota J, Joe Gibbs Racing affiliated car with the 23 have a flat tire or something on the last lap when he needs one point and he's like slowing down so much. I don't know, maybe he had a flat tire. But what got Bell is that he hit the fence and he sped up. He didn't slow down and arced off the corner from what I've seen. Again, he, he could have broke his suspension. We, we, we know how fragile these the suspension can be on these cars. The shell of the car is very strong with the suspension. is It's a Lego set. So, um... I, in my honest opinion, and again, maybe I'm, I haven't read anyone's comments on this because this is literally the, the record books, stuff that you're going to be probably watching on YouTube in the 2030s just got written today, right? Because this is going to go down as one of the most controversial moments in NASCAR history. 
and then you have like a, a 15, 20 minute wait. Who's in? Who's out? Th- this takes me back to Richmond 2013. In my honest opinion, based on what I've been told in the rule book, maybe they changed things overnight. <laughs> maybe they FedExed them. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I, I honestly don't think any of them. I think Byron and Bell, unless there is just not enough evidence there that they probably shouldn't have made it because Bell. You know, he broke the rule by riding the wall. Okay, I think it's like a 15-second penalty or something or whatever. And then Byron, I mean, it, it to me, maybe I'm blind, but it just seemed blatantly obvious, guys. And I'm a Hendrick fan. Look, I'm a Chase Elliott Hendrick fan, okay? So the fact that I'm advocating and saying that Hamlin should get in and Larson should get in and they're like, you know, below him in points... That's just my honest opinion. Again, maybe I don't know all the rules to it. Maybe I am way off, so if I am, forgive me. And there might be more information that comes out about this after I upload this video. So if there's anything missing, you know, it happens. But I'm curious, what do y'all think? I mean, maybe I'm I'm, I'm seeing this the completely wrong way, but it's just, it's fascinating. Like, the, the decision they have to make tonight at Martinsville, because they they're on big NBC, right? They got a lot of people watching. They got other crap they got to get ready for. They can't, pe- they can't keep people waiting forever. They're having to make a decision in minutes that is going to affect the sport, good or bad, for years. I mean, this is going to be talked about every single time they have a cutoff race. In some way, shape, or form, someone's going to mention it, you know? What can you do and what can't you do? And if you don't penalize them, you're basically saying, okay, that's that's allowed. And if you do penalize them, okay, that's not allowed. So now we have precedent what you can't do on the Martinsville wall. But do we have what you can do in terms of maybe having a little manufacturer support? I don't know. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. This is one of the most controversial moments in NASCAR championship history. It really is. Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, huge congratulations to Ryan Blaney, Logano, Tyler Reddick, and at the time of this video, William Byron on making the Final Four. Elliot, I'm gonna, I am wanted to say this real quick before I, I log off this video. Elliot did nothing to stop Ryan Blaney, and I'm a little bit disappointed there. He, he literally let the 12 car pass with minimal contact. Like, I get it, the 12 was gonna eat his lunch money, but I would have rather seen Ryan Blaney dump the nine car because the nine was blocking him then the nine car literally do what Blaney did at Homestead and just let him go. Like, maybe I'm just too new school, but I wouldn't let anybody pass me in that situation without hit the whole side of their car being full of tire marks and dents. I'm just keeping it real. It's for the championship. You know, if, you know, we could talk about it in the offseason, but we're racing for a championship. I'm shocked Elliot just... I know he was he was worn out. His car was slow. But you got to fight hard, man. You never know. Maybe the 12 misses the corner, gets up in the marbles, and he sucks for 10 laps. You never know. you got to fight hard. So I thought, found that a little bit interesting. That's all for now. If you want to pre-order that Race 1 diecast, make sure to pre-order at Circle B Diecast. Use the promo code Diecast Buffet. I wanted to keep this video short, but you know what? I'm passionate about this stuff. I like to talk about it. I'm curious. What did y'all think? Um, it, it's going to be interesting. And I like Christopher Bell, and I like William Byron. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? That's all for now. Diecast Buffet. Sign it off.